Welcome. This episode shows how I properly completed my final patio work strictly in accordance with my architectural drawings, design, and county construction requirements. It's absolutely critical that you or your builder strictly follow my steps in this approach. Like my other five parts, this episode will clearly show you how to meet your county's permit requirements and enable you to pass your building inspections efficiently. Most importantly, it will show you how to build a great structure that will last indefinitely. This is the sixth episode in my six-part series on patio construction. In this episode, we'll complete all the final patio work to achieve this condition. As a potential patio builder and owner, you have five viable options for completing this effort. You can use them individually or use them in combinations with the other options shown here. You can perform all the work yourself as the contractor. You have the option of subcontracting some of the tough construction tasks to the experts like I did. After studying parts one through six of my series, you can use this information for developing questions to interview your potential contractors for your patio work and show this series to your potential contractors to define your requirements. You can ask your contractor to review parts one through six and ask him or her to design and construct a variation that matches your home and meets your requirements. Lastly, you can use my six patio episodes for monitoring your contractor to keep him and his construction crew honest. I'll explain how my subcontractor expanded my concrete area to accommodate my patio's large roof and then covered the concrete with epoxy resin and sand. By the way, this is the third of three areas that I subcontracted out for the patio. I then covered the patio beams and small gable with stucco and finished the siding and patio ceiling. My roofing contractor then completed the gutters, downspouts, fascia, and softening. In addition, I'll address some of the improvements to the patio that my wife and I made through the years and show a brief comparison of my patio with my neighbor's new patio that he designed and built based on mine. And lastly, I'll wrap this up with some final recommendations. The upper photograph shows my old 14 by 20 foot concrete area and the lower photo shows how my concrete subcontractor expanded it beyond the roof lines and columns as shown by these three arrows. In other words, he and his crew expanded the patio concrete and its surrounding surface as shown in these four photos. Over the years, we've had to do a lot of work to maintain this epoxy resin and sand surface. With today's improved decorative concrete surfaces and concrete stamping and dyeing, you can get a much better solution for the same money as epoxy resin and sand. These are pictures of the decorative work our good friends had done on the surfaces in their garage and on their sidewalks and pool area. I strongly recommend you consider one of these improved surfaces. I next covered the beams and gable arch to achieve this objective appearance. The following clips show how I did this. In accordance with my architectural drawings, I then prepared the small gable arch for three inch thick semicircle arch installations on both the inside and outside of the arch as shown by the rear elevation excerpt below. As explained in detail in episode 5 of my patio series, I built and mounted these semicircle arches inside and outside of the small gable and to achieve this objective appearance after I completed stuccoing these surfaces. I then completed stuccoing around the beams and arch as shown here. Lastly, I finished up by stuccoing around the inside of the beams and arch. I next installed aerated ceiling material throughout the raised patio ceiling. 
Using the siding I reclaimed from the first truss area, I also replaced the damaged siding in these areas. In addition to installing it on the ceiling, I also installed the aerated ceiling material at, the, at these locations. At $350 a box, this aerated material turned out to be very expensive. I came close to completing the job with two boxes. Unfortunately, I had to buy a third box, even though I only needed two pieces in a 20-piece box. My supplier held fast and refused to sell the ceiling material by the piece. Nevertheless, it enabled me to build a great looking ceiling. Prior to finishing the upper portion of the ceiling, I also installed these two Tommy Bahama ceiling fans that my wife picked out. Per this rear elevation excerpt and my building inspector's approved change that I mentioned earlier in the patio series, I finished up by installing siding over the removed upstairs bedroom window. Complying with these standard detail A excerpts, my roofing subcontractor installed my fascia, soffiting, gutters, downspouts, and drip edges. I didn't want large and sightly downspouts tied to my ornamental columns, so my roofers directed the drain pipes to the rear of the house into downspouts. On the left side, I tied the downspout into a four inch underground pipe and directed it to an open drain away from the house. The photo on the left also shows this downspout tie-in to a four inch pipe. The photo on the right shows a downspout going into a splash block. The center photo shows a short spitter drain pipe directing the water from my small gable drain pipe away from the patio. Last year, as shown by the two upper photos, we had a 60 mile an hour wind tear down two of our neighbor's trees behind us, which in turn took down three of our large pine trees. I removed my other three large pines and planted over 20 small trees as shown in the lower photo. This renewed our major problem with the direct western sun in the late spring and summer afternoons. Consequently, I inserted this semicircular blocking piece in the center of our arc. I built it from 3 quarter inch plywood protected by 1 half inch PVC sheeting on both sides and covered the inside with the patio's matching ceiling material as shown here. On the exterior side, I covered the semicircular arch with the same Home Depot siding that I used for my small and large gables. In addition, my wife added these curtains from Home Depot to block the sun late in the afternoon. These curtains also provide privacy, which we previously did not have. Other improvements included a TV and outside bar. Considering that we used the patio almost every day between the months of March and November, these were great additions. The upper left photo is our patio, and the other is a picture of our neighbor's new patio, which he designed and built based on our patio's design. Please enjoy these two short film clips comparing both of these great patios. My wife is a dedicated gardener, so I designed our pavilion patio with some open air Greek architectural characteristics to feature her flower garden in the spring, summer, and fall. It's early spring and my wife's garden is just starting to grow. Nevertheless, I would like to show you this short video tour of our patio. During light to medium rains without high winds, we still enjoy our great patio as shown in this film clip.
This is a short video tour of our neighbor's patio. Their house also faces directly into the western sun in the afternoon. They loved our patio and wanted to build a similar one. And their uncle designed and built this patio, which in my opinion is a great looking and very functional structure. I think you'll agree. This is American innovation at its best. If you want to construct something similar, I recommend that you review parts one through six of my patio series. Subscribe to my channel and design and build an equally attractive patio. As we close, I would like to re-emphasize some important points of the six-part series. Please take advantage of your homeowner options as a customer to exercise your ability to implement viable options one through six. Use them to meet your needs for performing the patio work yourself or subcontracting some of it out. Use them to interview your potential contractors, define your requirements, and monitor your contractor's performance. Build a model of your new patio connecting it to your house. It's critical for you to see exactly what the patio is going to look like. If you or your contractor are not capable of constructing a good model, neither of you have any business attempting to build a real patio. After building this model and attaching it to your house, you'll have it for life. I strongly recommend that you use a model to ensure you are happy with your upcoming patio's design. If you have any doubts about the complexity of your patio design, you or your contractor should contract with an architect for your plans. If you live in a subdivision that requires trustee approval prior to starting construction, obtain county approval of your plans prior to submitting them to your subdivision trustees to make it very difficult for the trustees to disapprove the plans. After reviewing my patio series, if you are comfortable with doing some or all of your patio work, do it. Otherwise, subcontract out the tough tasks like I did. Lastly, and most importantly, ensure that your final design and actual patio meet all of your requirements like my neighbor did with the truly outstanding patio that he and his uncle developed. This concludes the final part of my patio series. At this time, I'm moving on to my next project. You're more than welcome to follow. In addition, if you have a great project that you want to post on my YouTube channel, email me some pictures and a brief description of it. If it qualifies for the Let's Fix It Right standards to help others, I'll interview you over the phone as a guest do-it-yourselfer, produce a high-quality video, and post it on my Let's Fix It Right channel. For the year following this posting, I'll share 50% of the potential YouTube benefits with you. If you have any subject matter requests or recommendations, please contact me. All of this said, I recommend that you subscribe to my channel, follow my projects, and save a bundle of money doing it.